Hello, everyone. Have you received the Holy Spirit? You have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you. And we are witnesses of these things and the Holy Spirit, which God has given to those who obey him. Acts 5.32 Notice the words, to those who obey him. But if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit, he is not of Christ. For all who are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. That same Spirit testifies to our spirit that we are children of God. If anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not of Christ. That same spirit testifies to our spirit that we are children of God. If you do have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you, you won't need to wonder if you have the Holy Spirit or not, because you will have this testimony in you. That same Spirit testifies to our spirit that we are children of God. Now the Lord the risen Jesus, the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image. From glory unto glory, just as from the Lord, the Spirit. And Paul later goes on to say that he is preaching Jesus Christ as Lord, if you read the following context. Beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. If you have the Holy Spirit in you, where the Spirit of the Lord is, Paul says, there is freedom. And if you have that Spirit, you will be beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, the glory of the Lord. And if you have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you, you don't need me to explain this to you. Jesus was saying the same thing at John 17, 24. At least he's referring to the same idea. Father, I desire that they also, his disciples, whom you have given me, be with me where I am, so that they may see my glory. He isn't talking about when they die or after Jesus comes back. He's talking about right now in their lives. Before they die, that they be with him where he is so that they may see his glory. That's what Paul is talking about at 2 Corinthians. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. We all are beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord and are being transformed into the same image from glory unto glory. Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, be with me where I am, so that they may see my glory. Jesus is in heaven 
sitting at the right hand of God. God raised him bodily from the dead, and he's seated at the right hand of God. So are you with Jesus where he is? If you have been born from above, I know that you are. God made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised us up together with him and seated us together with him in the heavenlies in Christ Jesus. How does that happen? How does that happen? In my father's house are many abodes. If it were not so, I would have told you, for I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. When did that happen? When Jesus rose from the dead and he met the disciples in the upper room. I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, you may also be. He's talking about it there again. In my father's house are many abodes. That word house in Greek means like household. So a man's family is his household, his house. In my father's house are many abodes. Now check out what Jesus goes on to say. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our abode with him. John 14, 2 to 3 and 23. It's all in the same teaching of Jesus in John 14. The Father's household is the children of God. And the children of God are those who have the Spirit of God testifying to their spirit that they are children of God. In my Father's house are many abodes. What does that mean? Where the Father wells. And where does the father dwell? In his children. We will come to him and make our abode with him. The father dwells in his children. Remember this, and we are witnesses of these things and the Holy Spirit, which God has given to those who obey him. Listen to Jesus. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our abode with him. He will keep my word. And if you keep his word, the father and the son will come to make their abode with you. And he continues, he who does not love me does not keep my words, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. We are witnesses of these things and the Holy Spirit, which God has given to those who obey him. The word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's. Who sent me? So, if we have the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Sonship, that same Spirit testifies to our Spirit that we are children of God. And we're beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord 
just as Jesus had prayed, Father, I desire that they also whom you have given me be with me where I am so that they may see my glory. If we are in Christ, we are in him who is at the right hand of God in heaven. That is where he is. We are with him where he is, in him where he is. And that is because we have the Spirit of Christ in us down here, the Holy Spirit. This is literal reality for those who have the Spirit of God dwelling within them. If you have the Holy Spirit, you won't really wonder what heaven is like. And you won't wonder because you already know. Unless you have the Spirit of Christ, you are not of Christ. Have you received the Holy Spirit? Do you have this testimony in you? That same Spirit testifies to our Spirit that we are children of God. Do you behold the glory of the Lord? If you want to have this testimony in you, you must, as Jesus said, deny yourself, take up your cross, and commit yourself completely to Christ by surrendering your life over to him to live his life rather than your own life. You will no longer be your own decider. Pretending is futile. If you have truly been born of God, born from above by the Spirit of God out of heaven, you really didn't need me to tell you any of that. Did you? You already know because it's a reality to you. There's only one true God, and we must know the only true God for eternal life, and that's the God of the Lord Jesus. Repent and believe the good news of Jesus Christ in the kingdom of his God.